Recently, Nikon made a camera announcement that they hope touches photographers. Or maybe I should say they hope photographers touch this camera. Hi, I'm Larry Becker, and this is the Nikon D5500 touchscreen DSLR. Nikon calls it an ideal entry-level DSLR, and I sure wish I had something like this when I was getting into DSLR photography. Let's have a look around this camera, and we'll discuss the specs. We'll show you around the camera. We'll cover the image quality. We'll dig into things that make this camera unique, and we'll wrap up with a look at the kit 18 to 140 millimeter lens. The D5500 is a new 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor equipped camera with Nikon's X-Speed 4 image processor. It has a 3.2 inch LCD that tilts and swivels 180 degrees, so you can use it from high and low angles and you can even see yourself from the front of the camera. The autofocus system is equipped with 39 autofocus points and 9 of those are cross type sensors for faster response. The ISO range goes from 100 to 25,600. You can capture video at up to 1080p60 with full-time autofocusing, and you can shoot 24.2 megapixel JPEGs or 12-bit RAW files at up to 5 frames a second, or you can shoot 14-bit RAW files at up to 4 frames a second. And the D5500 takes SD cards. Physically, this DSLR is small among the smallest DSLRs Nikon has ever produced. I have average size hands and it feels a bit small to me. It's not hard to use, it's just noticeably small and it weighs just 14.8 ounces. Nikon's able to make it so small and lightweight with their carbon fiber monocoque structure. Think of that as the body and the chassis being one. With this small body, there are some interesting button placements. The button to choose single shot, continuous shooting, or self timer is on the front below the lens release button, and the reprogrammable function button is on the front near the D5500 logo. I like the cleaned up mode dial as compared to earlier models where they had little icons that represented various scene modes. Now don't misunderstand, the D5500 has scene modes and special effects modes but you just turn the mode dial to the scene or the effects position and then you look at the LCD while you rotate the command dial to select the scene or the special effect that you want. Of course there is a fully automatic position and there are four settings enthusiasts will want programmed auto, shutter priority, aperture priority, and full manual mode. If you're shooting with the optical viewfinder, there's a user-friendly set of information that can be displayed in what Nikon calls a graphic display screen or you can change it to a more classic view. I like having this information displayed when I'm shooting so that I can see all my important settings. And I really like the I button because it lets you quickly access important settings without going through the menus. Overall, Nikon's menus are intuitive and easy to use. If you're new to Nikon, it'll take just a little getting used to, but then there's one setting that I'm surprised that Nikon makes you go into the menus to change, and that's Auto ISO. You can get to the ISO settings with the I button or the function button, but not Auto ISO. That's not one of the options. The D5500 has a pop-up flash and a hot shoe for adding a more powerful small flash. The pop-up flash does understand Nikon ITTL, but it can't control off-camera flashes using Nikon's creative lighting system as commander mode. If you need to do that, you'll want to add something like Nikon's optional SB500 speed light. And speaking of optional gear, besides the onboard stereo microphones, you can use an optional external microphone via the 8th inch mic jack. If you're new to DSLRs and you're considering the D5500 as your first one, it's likely that image quality is high on your wish list and there are a number of technologies that play a role in image quality. There's the image sensor megapixels and the physical sensor size. Cell phone cameras and point and shoot cameras, regardless of megapixel count, almost all have sensors that are a fraction of the size of the image sensor inside the D5500. Generally speaking, bigger sensor, better quality. Another impressive technology is that Nikon has begun delivering cameras with sensors that have no optical low pass filter. Now that filter has been a part of digital camera sensors for years and it's intended to minimize more a pattern interference by adding a slight blur at the pixel level. Removing it means that your images will be even sharper. Compared to other cameras in this class, the images out of this camera are just great. 
With good light and a good lens, like this kit 18 to 140 millimeter lens, which I'll tell you a little bit more about later, you can get crisp, color accurate shots. The ISO range goes from 100 to 25,600, and that means that you'll be able to shoot in lower light than what you might be used to. I did some low light shooting and cranked up the ISO, and I started noticing added noise at ISO 3200 and above. By 12,800, there were enough patches of large color noise that it was distracting, and the pattern noise was problematic with anything over 3200, but there are a couple of caveats here. First, most people won't be using their images at 100% size, and smaller final images will hide quite a bit of the noise issues. The other consideration is that I use a Photoshop or Lightroom workflow, and as of this recording, the only way to access the raw files from this camera is to use Nikon's Capture NXD or NX2 software. In a month or two, when Adobe releases an update to Camera Raw, I'll be able to post-process images like I'm used to and I'm sure I can knock down the noise even better than standard JPEG processing. I mentioned earlier that you can shoot 1080p60 HD video, and that means that you can get great video quality. The fact that the autofocus works during filming is nice, but in my testing there was a little focus hunting whenever I'd touch a different focus point. And it's relatively quick, but it probably wouldn't be especially fast and accurate filming a night football game. I also noticed that even though the focus motor is really quiet, the onboard microphones did pick it up when there was no other audio in the room. Ultimately though, for the kinds of videos most of us would be shooting with this camera, it'll deliver rich, accurate video footage and we'll probably never even notice the focus hunting or focus motor when we're looking over footage of the kids blowing out birthday candles or riding their bikes. One of the big wow features Nikon made sure to include in the first paragraph of their D5500 announcement is the touchscreen. And I'm happy to report that it's an especially usable touchscreen with commands for things like swiping and pinch zooming during image review. And there's touch focus or touch shutter. And it even works for settings with the I button and menu selections. Another wow feature is the built-in Wi-Fi. Quickly uploading images to social media for sharing is a big part of modern photography, and if you have an impressive camera and lens combo like this, and you're shooting impressive images, it's great that the built-in Wi-Fi lets you immediately send images to your smart device for uploading. I personally like the idea that I can use my iOS or Android device also as a remote viewing screen and remote shutter button. You can touch focus where you like on the preview, but that's just about all you can do. There are no other camera controls. You can see the aperture and shutter speed, but you can't change them. Earlier I told you about the great information displays on the rear LCD, but that kind of thing usually creates a problem. When you put the camera to your eye, the bright light from the screen in your peripheral vision could be distracting. And since the D5500 has a touch screen, if your camera is on a screen where accidentally touching something with your nose might change a setting, that could create a problem too. Well, Nikon solves both of these problems before they even happen by equipping the D5500 with an eye sensor. It automatically flips the LCD off whenever you put the camera up to your eye. The D5500, like just about every consumer targeted camera from Nikon, has in-camera retouching. Now this is beyond the special effects that get applied to images as you shoot. This is image adjustments after image capture. Honestly, I think of this as a wow feature that most folks wouldn't use a lot because it's not especially easy to retouch images on a 3.2 inch screen, even if it's a nice 1.03 million dot display. Then again, they'd probably take it out if nobody was using it, so I could be wrong. Nikon has had picture control settings for years. These are more subtle in-camera post-processing settings which are applied to JPEGs. RAW remains untouched. And I usually leave mine on standard or neutral, so I get what I would consider normal JPEG images. I noticed that they added a flat picture control, which most photographers probably won't use much, but since these picture control profiles can be applied to video, Videographers might like that flat control to improve their footage if color grading is a part of their workflow. The D5500 has an option for a rangefinder-like readout if you plan to focus manually. The self-timer has several time options and it lets you take up to nine shots on that timer. And I was surprised to learn that the D5500 has a built-in intervalometer for taking up to 9,999 shots. 
The 18 to 140 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 G EDVR lens has a 35 millimeter focal length equivalent of 27 millimeters to 210 millimeters. Now that's a great range, and if you don't have any other lenses yet, the kit with the D5500 and this lens will give you an especially versatile setup. You'll be able to wait a little longer before you start buying more lenses. The lens has some heft and the resistance of the ample zoom ring feels good. The two switches on the lens let you turn autofocus and vibration reduction on or off, and the manual focus ring is easy to use and I like the placement near the body. As with all the optical VR Nikon lenses I've used, you can really tell it's doing something when you're zoomed in all the way and you press the shutter button halfway. You go from looking at an image that makes you a little seasick to a locked down still image that eliminates quite a bit of that handheld shake. The Nikon D5500 is a nice lightweight DX format DSLR and the 24.2 megapixel sensor and all those features I've told you about will help ensure that you'll be capturing great memories from the first time the shutter clicks. For B&H and Kelby One, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help. We all know the difference a great teacher makes. They inspire you, challenge you, and push you to do the things you never thought you could. For creatives, that means you've got to know your tools inside and out, whether it's Photoshop or photography, lighting or Lightroom, InDesign or After Effects. And while there are free videos out there, you have to watch 30 bad ones just to find a decent one. And a lot of times, the techniques are either outdated, complicated, or just plain wrong. What we need is a better way to learn. One that connects amazing teachers with creative people all over the world, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A thriving educational community with nothing but the most talented, engaging, and respected teachers in the industry. Then we simplify the whole learning process with short, clear, concise classes. That's exactly what we've created for you right here at Kelby One.